Hello, and welcome to Haunted Log Presents Why Slay Dragons When You Could Be Going Fishing. Our GM tonight is the beautiful, lovely Scott. Take it away. Yo. Hello, I'm Scott, and uh, we've got a full house of players tonight, and I am excited about that. Um, if anyone is going to watch on the VOD later and has never heard of uh, that game before. There's a reason for that. It's not out yet. <laughs> um, uh, this is a playtest document. Uh, it was developed by the uh, fabulous game master uh, of the world of IO. Uh, he's, he goes by Brett Ultimus. And uh, the uh, current version uh this game was developed uh initially as a mini game a plug-in that you would uh stack on top of a D, D game but in the current version of the rules uh, it can be played as a standalone game also either one and uh we have a varied uh collection of characters um, I think ranging from level 1 to level 18, <laughs> as it works, as things happen to fall out. <laughs> uh, Nick, uh, who are you playing tonight? I'm playing a bard called Howie Fitz. <clears throat> Apparently, he's having throat problems. Um, <clears throat> so not a lot of singing tonight. Um, yeah, we, we met Howie, I think, at the end of one of Shannon's campaigns. Um, he is a bard, plays the bagpipes. Uh, he doesn't really like to uh, mingle too much with the group. He likes to hang out outside and do bardic inspiration out there because he's afraid of getting hurt. It's also easier to insult everybody when you're like standing further away from them. Yeah, it's so much easier. Especially a level could, 18. I wish I could remember the centaur's name that you had a little tryst with at the end of that. Did you guys break up? <laughs> oh no, we're still together. Why do I not remember this? <laughs> I'm certain that I would have listened to it. <laughs> okay, and uh, that is a uh, Howie is a human bard uh, with bagpipes. That's always fun. And uh, you're going to be play testing a subclass for a new subclass for us, correct? That is right. Um, I am doing the Bard College of Fishers tradition. And yeah, he's got a lot of cool stuff. He's like uh, bonus proficiencies, bonus cantrips, bonus spells. Um, he's got uh, a lot of different, like, like tall, he's got a tall tale that he can tell and causes them to have to do, uh, uh, what was that? Um, a charisma saving throw. And. He's got a whole bunch of like fisherman tales that he can tell that um, have different effects. So it's gonna be pretty fun. Does one of them happen to be Moby Dick? Uh, if I start like call me Ishmael, just just <laughs> mute me and we'll be fine. This is gonna be a long twelve hour drive, like ride. So twenty thousand leagues under the sea. Can't wait to get to that church scene. You just fire and brimstone it. <laughs> Hey Shannon, um, how do I pronounce Abriel? I don't know. It came on the fast character, so I thought we'd just call her Abby. <laughs> Abby <idea>. Normal. <laughs> I am Abby Normal. <laughs> and you are a gnome, is that right? I am a forest gnome that somehow found her way to the sea because I am playtesting the Circle of the Tides druid. Of the Tides. Oh, I, I, I thought that you were going with Circle of the Spore. You're going with Circle of the Tides. I, awesome. I made a last minute pivot. <laughs> Excellent. Pivot. I do not remember. <laughs> I do not remember what the Circle of the Tides Druid does, so um, this would be a learning experience for me. <laughs> um, not very much. <laughs> <laughs> Just some stuff. Some stuff.
stuff. She can do aquatic forms and circle spells, which essentially gives her the water spout cantrip. Ooh. Right. And uh, just to clarify, you guys uh, can use all of your D&D stuff. Uh, most of it won't come up because uh, the focus is going to be on catching fish. But, uh, yeah, you figure out uh, if you decide... Uh, if you get ticked off and decide, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to fireball the pond and see what floats to the surface. <laughs> that would be what our wizard would probably do. I mean, hey, Jason. I can. <laughs> I have whisper. Uh, I have dragon breath. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll be fine. <laughs> uh, She'll just yeah. evaporate the entire pond. Uh, Allison, I'm saving your character for la last introduction. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jason, uh, this is a recurring character, is it not? Yes. You're playing. I'm bringing I, I, I'm bringing back my half elf uh, from one of Shannon's campaigns, uh, Rimplements. He is a, a, a ranger. Rimplements. 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 Is he like? No, is he like? You know, a Christmas elf gone bad. <laughs> We were thinking more of the alcohol. It was a communal name of the character. Yeah, I was, I mean, just, I, 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 I was just, I just trying. I was just trying. I don't know what I what happened, and all of a sudden, I think Shannon said Rumplemints, or somebody said Rumplemints, and Shannon said, "That's your name." <laughs> it's like, all right, fine. <laughs> I think I think there's a backstory between you know him and Santa Claus where something went wrong. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, does he wear green and uh, red a lot? <laughs> but he's a uh, already has a uh, an arch type. He's a shooting star, so he's kind of like a sharp shooter. So it'll be interesting. My my, my fishing technique is going to be using bow and arrow. I think. Yeah, that's uh. But we'll go over that in the game, uh, because you do get to select that. Oh, nice. Yes. Uh. Hey Luke, uh, yep, your character's yep. name is Kai Lil. That is correct. All right, uh, he's a bird man, uh, Arokara. I believe that's pronounced right. Uh, from the Elemental Evil Handbook, um, and yeah, he's from the mountains and came down to go fishing. <laughs> what kind of bird? Come on, what kind of bird? Uh, he's a hawk. Yeah. <laughs> I guess they did. Like, have you voted in the favorite bird contest, by the way? No. No. This what? Is I something? Is that a thing? No, it's it's in New Zealand. I can't remember if you're in New Zealand or Australia, but there's a New Zealand favorite bird contest going on. But anyone from anywhere can enter the contest and vote for a favorite bird. Is the blue footed booby an option? I don't know. It's probably you, you can you can write it in. I vote for the tip mouse. Yeah, <laughs> I think they're all uh, they're all bird birds in, in New Zealand. So I'd have to go with the emperor penguin. Yeah, he shoots lightning. He's very dangerous. <laughs> bird of the year. Yes. Except they're looking for um, bird of the century right now. So yes. Does that would be the dodo. <laughs> Birds? I don't know. They... Glow worms? Is that a bird? <laughs> Can be. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Luke. Um, Sorry, you're Luke. Play testing I... <laughs> new, new subclasses, aren't you? Yes, I'm using the one known as Leviathan Hunter. Yes. Seems pretty interesting. Yeah, this is a character who exploits Hunter's Mark. Uh... And gets a heck of a lot more out of it. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, that leaves Allison. Yes. Uh, where do we even begin with this character? <laughs> we begin with... Tell us I typed in, create a character for me, you fast character. And just hit... Hit until there was something that said sailor. Uh, so I am apparently uh, a wizard, level 18, bladeslinger, <laughs> with uh, two, 
286,200 experience points. <laughs> and Dragonborn, that's a red dragon ancestry who's a sailor. Um, <laughs> for the record, I am the least competent D&D player on this team. By far. Like, <laughs> I, I, I acknowledge and embrace this, okay? <laughs> I do Which not know what I'm doing. the reason why this is so fun for us. It's only been six years. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I know! I know, you think, like, no, I mean, every time they're like, you, you know, here's the rules, follow them, and I'm like, yes, I will do that. And then I get distracted. <laughs> what dice is this? What is that? What is this one? What is this? I'm just kidding. We love you. She's also the reason why we have a new new magical item that always pops up as well. <laughs> yeah. But her name is I Captain Tenniel. Captain Tenniel. Captain Tenniel. It's it's Captain uh, Light Little. I, I like Tenniel better. Captain Light. <laughs> yeah. Um. Apparently, uh, I also um value the ship's safety above all. Uh, family was killed by a kraken, so I have a kraken issues. And uh, seeks revenge on pirates, and then fights anyone who insults the captain. My name is Captain, so I'm assuming anyone who insults me, I will immediately fight. <laughs> oh, I'm taking it's ventriloquism. Oh, I'm taking it. <laughs> I'm a dragon with uh, dragon breath. <laughs> Oh. I I don't see how this could go wrong. Really? If there could I, be a man. campaign killer, it would be <laughs> Allison's character. I, I it all went wrong when I realized I forgot to listen to everyone's character names. <laughs> oh god, I forgot to write it down. Don't worry. We can put it in the notes. I notes? remember Rumple. I remember Rumple Mint, the Christmas clown. I mean, Christmas elf. I mean, right. you're an elf, right? Half elf. <laughs> All right, so, so oh, yeah, now I know why there were issues with Santa. Half elf, half human, maybe. Oh, uh, that. Or, I, I don't know what the other half is. I could be half dwarf as well. I. <laughs> oh my God! He usually is elf. half. <laughs> usually half elf is. Uh, born of a, a, a human and an elf. <laughs> that would be funny, though. A, a half-elf, half-dwarf? I don't want to be a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a miner. Huh. Uh, this is the part where I normally um, ask if anyone has... Uh, questions about rules, but we're all new to the rules, so it's going to be all questions. Like, a, uh, pour yourself, so pour yourself a bowl of, uh, whoops, all questions. <laughs> and... Can we get popcorn with that? I don't know if you want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to apologize for that joke. Even I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Hello, chat. Oh. Okay, so uh, this is going to be uh, new to all of us. And um, we don't have an um, official adventure laid out for us. We're going to be making that up as we go along. I would like to specify that this group uh, is a rated R for language. So if anybody what? is uh, in the VOD of this later, and, um... Uh, Fucking call um, me out. It's all you and your fucking potty mouth. God damn it. Well, that and then all the other uh, double entendres and, and, uh... It's implied that Santa was sleeping with elves. I mean, I think it would have been... <laughs> Jolly good time. Hey, well, I would hope they would have picked it up from there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Uh, if everybody is ready, uh, we will begin at dawn. Um, uh, this is a small fishing village at the coast, and a, a beautiful sun is rising up over the ocean uh, to the east. So, uh, Allison, what's your favorite color? Let's go with, um, let's go with purple. Okay, a purple sun is rising up over the coast. Nice. My other one's and... going to be teal, so, you know, maybe there's a second sun that's teal. It's invisible. <laughs> okay, uh, the first sun is rising, and um, uh, then uh, the smaller teal sun uh, pokes out over uh, to the southeast. Nice. <laughs> so, woo, uh, that's going to have some strange effects on the tide. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that is, uh, and uh, the. Uh, serene uh, quietness of the beach is broken by the sound of bagpipes. Uh, Nick, uh, can you describe what Howie looks like for us? <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Howie's a human. Um, <clears throat> probably about 5'7". A little shorter than normal. Um, uh, dark hair kind of pulled back into a braid. Um, he's wearing um, really tight-fitting red um, scale mail armor, um, leather. Um, he likes it really tight. Um, uh, he looks kind of like uh, the gimp, I would guess, like the whole outfit. Um, not the face mask, though. He keeps that for later. <laughs> Um, he's got he's got a pair of a uh, uh, he's got a bagpipe on his on his on his arm, and he's got a couple more instruments. He's got um, uh, a longhorn and a pan flute in a bag on his hip, and a sword on his back or on his on his hip too. So, all right, and I am also giving you a. Uh... Uh, for free, a set of uh, fishing gear that includes a rod and reel, uh, some fishing line, and uh, one hook. And I believe that your character can use that as a magic focus. Yeah, instead of like uh, his instruments, he can use the fishing equipment. That's a fairly standard thing for these. Okay, so uh, the, the bagpipe music uh, breaks the silence and chases away all of the blue-footed boobies. Uh, so thanks for that. And this noise is heard by Abby, uh, the, the clever druid. So what does Abby look like as she walks up on the beach? She's a gnome. Um, she looks like your average average druid. Uh, she's clothed in leathers that she's got from animals. Um, she's got flowers in her dreadlocks, kind of long down the middle of her back. Uh, she's got a simtar attached to her back, probably, you know, downsized for her size. And she's just taking in the sunrise. This is always a fun part. What? How tall is your gnome? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> She's short. Um, I didn't look that up. Short works. She's short. Okay, you are the only short character in here. So, oh, uh, she's three foot four feet, or three three foot four inches. Wow, and forty pounds. It's been a long week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so uh, if anyone gets uh, pulled off <laughs> into the water by a swordfish, um, I know where to start. <laughs> and uh, how does and how does Abby feel about bagpipe music? Well, you know, she's always happy to make a friend, but it's kind of fucking up her serene morning. Uh, you know, she's just trying to chill and take in the scenery. Hey, I'm just trying to make money here. Come on. I'm just trying to make money. <laughs> so she's clamping her hands over her ears and kind of glaring at him. And I'm like, put money in the box. I'm just yelling at her. Put money in the box. <laughs> Does she put any coins in the box? If I put money in, will you stop? Play louder? Yeah, I'll play louder and longer. <laughs> Just for you. She does not. <laughs> Fine. Understood. Uh, hey, Jason. Oh, uh, I'm thinking that Rumplemints was uh, sleeping on the beach until uh, was rudely interrupted. So uh, tell us about Rumplemints. His parents didn't like him much. <laughs> <laughs> Henceforth the name. <laughs> so he, he's... He's a... The, would be considered probably younger than the middle age of a, of a, of a half-elf. Average, average in size and weight. Uh, not quite the most normal of of uh of uh the the half elves that, that a normal traveler may come across he is uh, most definitely in love with his bow uh, that 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 is his best friend probably his only friend at this point <laughs> is that a short is that a short bow or a long bow uh it is it is a longbow. Okay. So, yeah, your bow is probably longer than the gnome is tall. Uh, yes. Probably, maybe even longer than two gnomes. <laughs> Very possible. <laughs> depending on how small the gnomes are. <laughs> okay. But, yeah, so he, 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 he decided to come down to the beach to, to try his, his sharp shooting abilities on... Uh, fishing rather than um, land game. And you are a Leviathan hunter, so you're looking, so you're looking to catch a big fish this time, aren't you? Big fishy, 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 fishy. Is there a specific fish that you're looking for? Are you looking uh, for the one you got away? Are you looking for? No, nope, I, 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 I've been wanting to try. Uh, I, I, I saw a swordfish steaks being served at one place and had one and was really good. So I want to try hunting the, 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 the biggest marlin slash swordfish uh, that I can ever that I can find. All right. So this was brought you to, and I just decided this, um, this beat called the Angler's Coast. Uh, looking for adventure and uh, something nice to mount on your wall, maybe back home. Better else is you, or or a, a long, long, long enough snout to use as a, a sword. And I, I did, I did not intend that as a pickup line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you decide to try it, uh, hey, you got an acrobat skill. I do. Put it to you. Put it to good use. <laughs> So yeah, no. He he wakes up to the to the, the the dirges of the the. Oh no! You're not a leviathan hunter. You're the uh, you're the stars. Yeah, shooting shooting star. I screwed. Okay, okay. But I'm, I'm just, but still, I mean, it, it 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 all it all fits in. Yeah, that's the other ranger. Speaking of the leviathan hunter, uh, <laughs> Luke, uh, your character is pronounced. Hi, Lil. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Woo, got one right. <laughs> so, 
So uh, Kai Lil is a ranger, and you are playtesting a new subclass for us, the Leviathan Hunter. That's correct. Oh. So uh, Kai Lil uh, walks up um, from along the along the beach, uh, holding a parchment. It is a flyer, uh, which says which is for a uh, fishing expedition. And there's supposed to be a boat here that's going to give you a ride out onto, out um, into the uh, best fishing waters over the coral reef that is nearby. And you're looking around, and uh, instead uh, you're seeing um, uh, uh, some people who are arguing about uh, bagpipe music. And can you describe... Kai Lil the Ranger for us. Okay, so he's basically naked. Because <laughs> he's a hawk. He's covered in feathers, so he can't see his bips and bobs anyway. Um, he's got a long bow, uh, medium size, so about six foot, uh, weighs about 130. Uh, he's pretty young, so he's in his 20s. But yeah, <clears throat> basically, he's just a hawk. Cool. And do you have a flight movement speed? Feet. Might come in handy. Great. Okay, and you are a Leviathan hunter, so uh, uh, you're the one who's uh, looking for... Okay, both of the rangers are looking for big game tonight, uh, today. Uh, this is probably going to go for bigger than mine. <laughs> Uh, is there some tragic backstory that uh, drove Kai Lil to become a Leviathan hunter? Uh, not really. He just uh, likes living off the land and, you know, protecting the land, hu hunting sort of certain creatures, and he's heard about this giant, I guess you could say a fish, that he's, look yes. that he's looking to hunt. Okay. There are valuable fish in this game, including magical fish, that can be used to uh, construct magic items. So, uh, yeah, there is a lot of coin that can be made this way. How funny it would be if your character was a, a pelican. Right? <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> <so tragic>. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> oh, okay. <clears throat> so that... And oh, there's your ship. Um, it's uh sailing in now, and it's uh looks like it's about to beach itself. Uh, there comes uh here comes a ship with a uh, little uh dragon head as its masthead, uh, carved under the front of it, and that is the ship of Captain Little of Captain Light Little, the uh red dragonborn wizard. Uh, Allison, uh, what does Captain Light Little's ship look like the ship is yeah um it's gonna be painted so like most of the other ships are you know nice wood they look you know th this one's just various colors of red <laughs> dark <laughs> light just kind of you know whatever colors of red they could you could possibly think of um the, uh... Okay, you've got the, a single-masted... Uh, it's single -masted. painted different. Yes. It's, uh, it's painted red. Uh, the stern to the ship might have some black on the outlines or whatever. Uh, the flag that is flown on it is like, uh... It's a black flag with a red dragon face. It's sticking its tongue out at you. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and of course you have the dragon flag up top. There are various, uh, the, the sails themselves are clearly sewn together from various, like, sheets of red and have been repaired multiple times. Um, and just clearly doesn't really care that much about him so long as they run, you know? The ship, uh, 
is coming close to land, but also seems to be kind of above the sea just a little bit. Oh. Um, because, you know, a little bit of like some flying Dutchman and in the ship. It's just flying right above there. Groovy. And uh, uh, she's looking the at the back. Yeah, go ahead. Does the ship have a name yet? Kraken Hunter. That's it. The, uh, the dragon's okay. uh, family was killed by a kraken. <laughs> and um, so uh, she, she, doesn't, she doesn't like krakens very much. And she sees the uh, bagpiper and she sees the bagpipes and starts to have a flashback. Not over the sound, but because of the shape of the bagpipes. <laughs> Let's just say the bagpipe itself is 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 in danger of being <laughs> stabbed and fried. Because bagpipes do kind of look like a kraken if you're like you know a little traumatized. What's the name of your ship? <clears throat> kraken Hunter. Okay. The Kraken Hunter. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, okay. Somewhere along this trip, I am going to change the name to Philip My Kraken. On your ship. <laughs> that was the centaur, Phil Kraken. <laughs> that was right. him. Yep. Well, oh, God. <laughs> love finds a way. <laughs> okay. Um, everyone on the beach can now clearly see. Um, unless you're nearsighted, that there is a tall, uh, red-scaled uh, dragonborn um, standing at the ship's wheel, uh, steering this uh, fishing boat in. And it the fishing boat is tough to miss because it is uh, every hue of bright red. <laughs> and how is this... Uh, how is Captain Light Little Dress? Um, are you going for the Captain Hook regalia? Or are you like a, a dirty, uh, swarmy sailor? Um, I think that Captain... Um, I noticed that some of the gear is like a silk rope. So I think I'm going to be pretty dressed to the nines. Like the ship looks like hell, but... You know, we got the the plumed hat and all that other stuff. You know, we know where your um, budget went. Yes, that is where the budget went. <laughs> um, and uh, it's uh, we're gonna go with mostly a black outfit, even though like everything else is red. I think the outfit herself, because her scales and because of everything, are kind of red iridescent. Everything else is black, except for like. The white plume on the hat. <laughs> okay. Um, well, if it's white, it's definitely not a uh, hawk feathers. So, <laughs> uh, Kai Lil may or may or may not feel a little relieved about that. <laughs> and because you are experiencing a traumatic flashback, I think this is an opportunity for the uh, first dice roll of the evening. I'd like you to grab a 20-sider for me, please. Okay. Okay, and you are going to be using a skill which I believe is... Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Uh... All right. Uh, first, look under your tool proficiencies. See if you have any vehicle proficiencies watercraft yes yes you do oh excellent mm -hmm. okay so uh you are going to be rolling for me uh your 20 cider you're going to add i rolled a uh, 20 <laughs> two points for your two points for all me all right <laughs> uh so yeah that's at least 22 uh plus <laughs> Uh, plus your dex bonus, so um, uh, you are going to be able to expertly, like uh, magically good, uh, 
uh, dock your boat, uh, despite the fact that you're uh, badly distracted and experiencing a traumatic flashback at the time, maybe that's even the reason. So describe how you're able to park your boat. Well, I think and it's... Be, and be fantastic. <laughs> I was going to say, I think, you know, first off, she's going to pull in there and actually going to slide it around, you know, so you're almost backed into the dock, like, you know, you back in vehicles, except that she's going to, you know, do a sort of sliding in and come up to the side, loop the rope around the deck to pull it in and then have, you know, a couple of red pillows on the side to, like, stop it from, like, hitting the deck. Um, although she doesn't really need them because she barely even touches those. And then um, okay, once so everything's tied down, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we're like coming towards a deck like this and then doing a slide and like landing right next to the deck. <laughs> right next to the dock. Yes, dock. And then... Yes. Um, Jumping on one of the ropes that she's attached and then sliding down it to the the uh, the dock. The deck. Yeah. <laughs> dock, dock, <laughs> dock. Deck and okay, dock. Yeah. Dock and deck. <laughs> All right, we have just established that there is a dock. Uh, so the dock just uh, <laughs> magically uh, uh, appears uh, mm -hmm. and uh, rolls out of the surf. Um, out of the sand, and it uh, kicks up sand all around. Uh, it rolls out like a carpet. Please tell me that and, some of the uh, dirt hits the bagpiper, so he starts coughing and can't. <laughs> play the bagpiper. Better roll on that. <clears throat> Better roll on that. Oh. Luck roll. Yeah, let's make an evasion roll for that. And I'm, <laughs> going to, I'm going to roll a twenty sider to establish a random difficulty and. Uh, your difficulty is only going to be a six, so I'm right next to the bagpiper as well. <laughs> I got a thirteen. Thirteen. All right. So uh, describe how you avoid this uh, spray of sand into your face. I. Uh... So Kyle is next to me, right? No. No? Abby is. Abby, Abby oh, is three shit. foot four. So. All right. So I uh, I swing around and I do this little pirouette and I see this. It's coming at me. I do this pirouette and I leap, lean, lean down and I pick up Abby and put her right in my face. <laughs> and I just kind of block it with her. <clears throat> and I act like we're dancing and I just pick her up and I swing her around and she gets hit with the sand and I put her back down and like, and I bow to her like my lady and <clears throat> thanks for the dance. Okay, so if we rewind a little bit, as the ship is coming in, her hands fall down from her ears, and she's just, like, in awe. Like, this is the coolest thing she's ever seen. So when the ship, like, whips around and throws sand, and Howie picks her up as a shield, she's still just wide mouth open to awe. And then when the sand hits her, some, some sand falls from her mouth, and she's like, whoa. <laughs> I was going to give you the option of a dodge roll too. No, oh no, but she's she's better. taking that sand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, let's see how the sand tastes. Uh, Shannon, roll me a, a die roll on an odd number. It tastes salty. On an even number, it tastes uh, umani. <laughs> salty. Salty. Okay. Uh, this is a saltwater ocean that you're next to, then. So as the awe kind of wears off, she's... Uh, yeah, it's got a uh, mild hint of um, uh, sand mite. <laughs> mm, I've probably ingested worse. But gross. <laughs> No blue-footed booby, though. Boo. <clears throat> okay. Uh, everybody, it looks like uh, the ship for which you have been waiting has arrived. 
Uh, it is the only ship here. And it yeah, yeah, it looks like a it looks like a fishing boat. Uh, it's got uh, one sail. It's got uh, some ports on the side for oars in case it uh, needs to row itself in, in the port. But um, it looks uh, less crowded than you thought that it might. Abby's <clears throat> taken off in a run. Gotta get there. It's so cool. I gotta meet this captain. Okay. <laughs> Abby, uh, because you declared it, um, uh, you looks like uh, you're going to get uh, your first choice of uh, where you want to sit on the sit on the boat. Uh, you bound up onto the deck of the Kraken Hunter, and your little and your uh, no, little gnomish feet uh, clap down onto uh, red floorboards, which are a nice burgundy color. And uh, you are still standing uh, face to, I'm not sure how tall our captain is, maybe kneecap? 6'1", <laughs> uh, <six laughs> captain is 6'1". Oh, yeah. <laughs> about waist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, so uh, face to butt with the, <laughs> uh, with this dragonborn captain. So as soon as she gets next to the captain, she's kind of, you're so cool. This is so cool. Where'd you get this ship? Everything's so cool. I want to be right here. And she points right next to right the next. wheel. This is a very different character for Shannon. I know, right? <laughs> Gnomes are excitable. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. And uh, you are saying this in common? I'm yep. guessing. Yep, and okay. then she'll extend her little hand as far as she can. She's like, "Hi, I'm Abby. Hi, hi. You're so cool. Who are you?" Um, Captain uh, Lightlow is going to like this a lot. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> well, hello there. I appreciate anyone who can admire this boat as much as I can. My name, and I'll swoop down, you know, just dramatically and sort of graciously, uh, is Captain Light Little. And your name is? I'm Abby. Hi! She's basically just bouncing in, in place, like, Aah! Oh, Abby. Oh, and she's still covered in sand. <laughs> I um <laughs> I uh what am I gonna grab? Um oh I grab a piece of um I grab a napkin and I'm like here you can dust off a little bit with it. Like a not a napkin, a um scarf. Handkerchief. Yes. She she takes it and her eyes kind of well up with tears and she hugs it to her chest. It's like the size of a towel. Yeah, I probably wrap around her. <laughs> not 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 again. safe wearing sand on a boat. <laughs> and again and again, Captain Light Little is is just all into this. You know what? I think this is going to be a good trip. I think we're going to have a good time. I'm excited. Okay. Are you excited? I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, next on the board is Rumplemints. I know because I just rolled a six-sider. <laughs> uh, hey, Jason, uh, is Rumplemints even getting on the boat? I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to make assumptions here. So I was kind of thinking about this just a little bit ago. Okay. With it being a half elf, and elves, it's not like he's a, a sea elf or anything like that. He's more of a from the the high elf, so more land or, or mountain forest stuff. So he, he's used to lakes and rivers and streams. So he's right now he's just looking at this as uh, that this is just a, a big lake. But we'll we'll see what happens when they actually get out in the open water. <laughs> so he he's fine for right now. <laughs> 
but he does like the the if there's a crow's nest and that that's where he's going to want to um post himself out at uh initially okay so uh this half elf ranger uh with a longbow uh just steps on to uh just steps onto the boat um does not carrying a fishing pole uh but allison uh you do keep an adequate stock of uh fishing poles and nets uh for your clients to use on board so are you handing those out or are you uh, charging for them oh i'm charging okay. <laughs> except for um except for abby who made an impression <laughs> Okay. <laughs> How much just do you charge? with stars in her eyes? Um, I'm not. What's a normal like? Like I don't know a gold piece, a copper piece, one of the pieces of whatever the. <laughs> okay. <laughs> also, she's Roll a dragon, me. so uh, you know it's gonna it's gonna have to be gold. I'm gonna say a gold piece because dragon. <laughs> That's uh, rumblements. Um, the captain uh, is offering to uh, rent you fishing gear, and it's kind of expensive. It, uh, she, the, she's a asking for a gold piece uh, just to rent a fishing pole. And she's also going <laughs> to uh, say, I, I, you know, I'm a wizard, so it's got a spell on it, right? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just going. I'm going to go bow fishing. <laughs> Nifty. She's she's figuring out she's gonna charge him later. So. <laughs> oh, next is Kai Lil, uh, the other ranger. Uh, uh, so, uh, on. uh, are you taking this boat ride? Oh yeah. So what you'll see is uh, he'll stretch out his massive wings, and he'll take flight um, up to like the crow's nest thing. He's going to get there so, before Rumplemit. He's, he's going to salute um, Alice's character. You know what? I like yes. that. It's got style. <laughs> yeah. Abby Rumpel will also make it to the cruise. Abby will also look yeah. up like, this is the best day ever. <laughs> when you get to the crow's nest on top of the on top of the mast, there's an actual crow's nest in the crow's nest. Because it's been that long since anybody's cleaned it out. <laughs> I was gonna get so well, there's a nice a straw nest for you that there. Yeah, I'm just gonna sit down and enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing Rumplemit was about halfway up <laughs> when the <laughs> when the other oh, ranger yeah. got there. <laughs> uh, Luke, do you need? Do you want to rent any fishing gear, or are you going to be bow hunting also? Uh, I'll probably do a little bit of both, so I'll probably give uh, Allison's character money later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, that leaves Howie Fitz, our bar, uh, who tromps up the... Uh, with all of his instruments clanging... <laughs> Prompts up the pier on uh, and then the gangplank and steps on board the Kraken Hunter. How does he Ooh. announce himself? Who the hell painted this thing? Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh my God! It's like somebody bled all over this thing and didn't clean it up. Oh, oh yeah, it's the dragon. Yeah, okay, got it. Yeah, dragon. <laughs> okay, right, that figures. Yeah, no sense of style. I get it. And, <laughs> and I walk to the front of the boat. And I take out my uh, my pan flute and I start playing uh, uh, what sounds like the uh, the theme song from Titanic, but it's not quite the theme song from Titanic. <laughs> I was halfway expecting to take out your longhorn and do a fanfare and say, <laughs> <laughs> and say "Howie has arrived." <laughs> uh, talk amongst yourselves for a second. I need to um, blow my black 
blow my bagpipes. Yeah. <laughs> like Howie has a blow his bladder. <laughs> Howie's got a thing for mouth instruments. So. so does Howie have a gnome shaped like clean spot on his torso? <laughs> yes. <laughs> just kind of like like perfectly outlined in sand. Just kind of like <laughs> like it's dry and it just looks like you. Yep. Yep. Hey, hey, and Mister, that- can you play something a little more upbeat, please? This is an exciting day, and you're kind of harshing my mellow. Uh, you know, I get paid a lot of money to do this. I don't need any any uh, advice from you, Pipsqueak, but uh, it's fine. If you really want to, put some money in that jar right there, and uh, I'll play whatever you want. Uh, I put a copper in there. That'll get you, and it's a... Uh... Daddy Shark? <laughs> yep. I was I was thinking wh- wh- whiskey in the jarro. So oh if, no, that's like that's five coppers. If that's he not, starts that's playing one. Daddy Shark, I'm gonna start dancing around. <laughs> and uh, Captain Lyle's gonna go. Yeah, you're not worth that so much money. I'm drowning you, and I can smell money. It's not you. There's lots of other scents coming off you, but it, money is not one of them. It's the leather. It just keeps all the smells. I'm sorry. No, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't clean very well. Um, so Captain Little debates dropping him in the ocean for like, cleanliness' sake rather than anything else, but decides not to, and maybe, you know, might happen later on. He might enjoy a good keel hauling. You never know. <laughs> I think it's time to walk the plank. He's been walking the plank for quite some years. <laughs> As a guy who actually knows what keel hauling is, woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, it sounds like you're ready to set sail. Um, is there a particular uh, favorite fishing spot that Captain Lightlittle has? Uh, like a uh, 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 like a raging whirlpool or a, uh, a shady spot over a lagoon? Is it a coral reef? You going out over the deep seas? I would say... Uh... We're going to go uh, to a huge set of rocks that are overhanging everything. And uh, just getting in just as close as possible to these rocks, which would instantly destroy a slip ship if you hit them wrong. Because I don't, I don't see any way this could go wrong. Uh, and on one side of them, the, there's just nice, cool water, but the other side does have a whirlpool that could drag you in that would pull you into the rocks. It's a great fishing spot, though. Lots of fish. I trust you 100%. I don't. Where are the fish going to be? In the whirlpool? I don't want to do this. Nope, 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 nope. I, well, I want to see what that elf does when we go into like deep water. I want to see what the... Come on. So, let's go to deep water. I want to see that elf freak out. I've got I've got tricks in, up my sleeve, and she's sleeveless. <laughs> hey, Luke, I would yeah. like you yeah. to decide for us. We're doing a little bit of world building here. Uh, what season is it? Spring, summer, autumn, or winter? Let's say winter. Winter. Okay. Yeah, we got different uh, fishing charts for uh, each of the different seasons. So, uh, Jason, roll me percentile dice, please. All right. Let's Are you going to tell me if I need to roll high or low? Uh, Just say yes. Roll Just don't. <laughs> don't do it. Uh, rolling high looks much better than rolling low on this chart. Uh, that means I'll end up rolling low. That's why you don't tell Jason what the roll has to be. You just let him roll. <laughs> Called it! 20. 20. Okay. 
Uh, not the worst, uh, but the, it does look like there are some uh, very dark rain clouds that are gathering. Uh, if you uh, do uh, fish Wait, are in we, the... Are we winter in the, in the southern... You will all be make, taking disadvantage on your fishing roll. <laughs> oh, man. I forgot. Is it winter in the southern hemisphere or winter in the northern hemisphere? You're assuming we're on Earth. Well, yes, but <laughs> this planet winter flat. is cold, right? It's flat. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold, right? We're going for cold. Yeah, cold. Okay. Okay. If it's cold, I obviously wouldn't be sleeveless. <laughs> I don't know. Your metabolism would keep you warm. Okay. <laughs> I did also Some give her the scarf. I am going to take oh, that sorry. scarf and wrap it around like a blankie. We'll say that this uh, that the Angler's Coast is close enough to the equator that it's brisk, but it isn't bitter cold. So You can get by with just your adventuring cloaks and still be comfortable. So, um, uh, if and when the rain starts, you will be at disadvantage on all of your fishing table rolls. And uh, I don't think that we use the precise effect, so that doesn't apply. All right, so you pull up to these rocks, and uh, does our high-level wizard have any spells? that uh, might help with the weather. Um, let me see. I realize this is probably the first time you're looking over your spell list. That is uh, <laughs> probably correct, yes. <laughs> I have prepared, prepared spells, okay. Meteor Swarm, Time Stop. Great. Cloud kill? I don't know what cloud kill is. So. Uh, that that's like a, a, um, a gaseous, poisonous cloud. Yeah, that's. It summons a cloud which does kill. It does not kill the cloud. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> First time uh, wizard Hunter... here. I got killer Hunter... clouds from outer space. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Thunder, minor and elementals, uh, disintegrate, probably delayed blast, fireball, incendiary cloud clone. Oh, control weather! I got control weather. Oh, <laughs> control weather D and D spell. Let me look up the specifics of that. And okay. uh, what does um, it look like when Captain Lightlittle is casting spell? Do you chant oh, it's going to be dramatic. Under your breath? No, no, no. It's going to be dramatic. Everybody knows. <laughs> she's going to make sure everybody around her knows that she's casting a spell. And she's going to talk over anyone who tries to talk or anything. And there's probably going to be some lightning and thunder as well. Is it necessary? No. Does does she do it? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yes. Okay, this takes ten minutes to cast. Uh, but it's, ooh, good and strong. Uh, you take control of the weather within five miles of you for the duration. Uh, duration is eight hours. Uh, you must be outdoors to cast this spell. Moving to a place where you don't have a clear path to the sky ends the spell early. So, uh, don't wander into any caves. Gotcha. When you cast a spell, you change the current weather conditions, which are determined by the DM based on climate and season. 
You can change precipitation, temperature, and wind. It takes 1D4 times 10 minutes for the new conditions to take effect. Once they do, you can change the conditions again. When the spell ends, the weather gradually returns to normal. When you change weather conditions, uh, find the current condition on the following table and change its stage by one up or down. Let's see. Uh, okay, so you can, right now, uh, you are at the rain stage. So you can change that to either overcast or foggy or going the other way, torrential rain or blizzard. We should, we should probably go with overcast or foggy. <laughs> okay. Uh, since the rain, much as I like the rain, it would contribute to lack of, like, money. <laughs> so. Yes. So uh, while, also... while she's casting her spell and wants all attention on her, is Howie still playing instruments? Of course he is. Yes. Okay. <laughs> of course so he is. Abby's going to bound up to Howie and, like, kind of throw her hand towards his box of money and cast Minor Illusion to show a bunch of coins and say, <laughs> I'm only going to let you keep this if you stop right now and watch the captain. Uh, let's see. Um, <clears throat> Does he fall for the illusion? Right. Uh there is a DC against it if you want to do an investigation. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, what's the roll? Um, the charisma modifier sixteen. Oh yeah, yeah. The coins <laughs> become faint to you. <laughs> and he he just grabs out his longhorn and just blows it right in your face for a really long time. Her, she just ah! kind of winces and her hair flies back with the wind of the horn. <laughs> Get out of here, you! And she'll she'll stomp and pout and go back to the captain. Jeez, did you your... see that? Did you see that shit? God, what the shit I put up with on this boat? My God. On the record, the cross... captain is completely oblivious to this and in the middle of a spell and can't hear or notice you care about the bard at all. <laughs> so, yes. <sighs> Never trust a shorty. Never trust one of them. Ever. <laughs> Although the lightning does come close to the bard. <laughs> not, not, oh, like, just enough to, like, yeah, bring the hair up a little. <laughs> oh, this I mean, is he is wearing scale mail. <laughs> Uh, because the weather has shifted to overcast, you will now all have advantage on your fishing table rolls. Ooh. Instead of disadvantage. Okay. So that means that you get to uh, roll your dice twice and choose which of those two rolls you like. Which means I'll end up rolling low on both. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, speaking of fishing, um, uh, we've got an hour left, so let's uh, talk about the specifics of that. Uh, first, we begin by determining the fishing order. That's just another way of saying that we roll for initiative. <laughs> Everybody roll a 20-sider if you have an initiative bonus on your character sheet. Um you're going to add that. If it doesn't say that you have a specific initiative bonus, I believe that it is your dexterity. Have I rolled uh, a dice yet? No, uh, no, no, because you chose to not dodge the sand. Yeah, so I rolled a one. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled, uh, I rolled a three, although I have an initiative of plus five, so. Okay. I think it's an initiative. I think it's an issue. INT is initiative, right? Yes. Yeah. It has plus five with a 20 below it, but I'm pretty sure it's a plus five that I use. So three plus five. So I rolled an eight. Okay. And honestly, Allison, it's initiative, so I don't care. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, Shannon, what is uh, your initiative bonus? Three, it's three total. I got a plus two. Three total. Okay. <laughs> hey, Nick, what did you roll? Initiative. I got a six. Okay. Hey, Jason, what'd you get? 23. <laughs> So our role, our initiatives range from 23 what about Luke? to 3. Luke. Luke. Yeah. I got a Luke, 22. What you got? Luke got a 22? Yeah. Holy smokes. Okay. So uh, the, rain, the rangers are very quick about this. All right. Uh, step two, choose your fishing style. Now, in uh, these rules, you get to choose uh, which of your stats that you're going to use for your fishing role. So that could be your intelligence, your dexterity, even your charisma. So, uh, Jason, uh, which stat are you going to be using? Dexterity. Dexterity? Okay. And yeah, yeah, I believe that that is the bow hunting, actually. All right, basic fishing style. Oh, fly fishing. Or is that under the advanced? Uh, let me I'm checking this real quick. Stilt fishing. All right, it is fly fishing. Okay. But uh, you're using a bow to do it. All right. Ugh. Sorry, I, I'll, I, I last read through these a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I don't actually know what I'm doing here. All right, this is <laughs> dexterity based. Uh, fly fishing is a style of fishing that mimics an insect's movement. Uh, you cast in such a way as... The, oh, that is not... Okay, uh, the short version is that you're going to use your dexterity for this. But uh, we're flavoring it as hunting with a bow. Which I'm sure that there is a specific name for that in here. Is it under fishing technique? Oh, let me run a search here. Not bowl, bow. That'd actually be funny if there was bowl fishing. Oh. Okay, so... All right, you've got your bow out. And on uh, yeah, you pick out a spot on uh maybe the uh you can't take the crow's nest, but maybe the bow or the stern of the boat. Uh you're looking out over these rocks and you're seeing some nice-sized fish which are circling around underneath the boat. The next thing I need you to do is roll me a D100. Ooh. Your roll on the fishing table. And the coast has its own specific fishing tables where you, if anyone is, uh, Reading along at home, we are using the coast fishing table for near shore fishing. I got rolled it? a 60. 6 0. Okay. You. Uh. You. Spot a, a creature that is uh, brightly colored. It is called a jester fish. 
All right. So, uh, you are going to now uh, make an attack roll with your bow. So, roll me a 20-sider. I'm going to declare that I'm also going to be using my sh sharpshooter skill. Ah. Let's see, so I rolled 18 minus... Yeah. You have advantage on this roll because of the weather. Oh, that's right. Okay. I think I'll take my first roll. <laughs> okay. That was a 16 minus 5 plus 7. Your target number is a 15. Um, uh, so I rolled effectively an 18. Ooh. Okay, you managed to uh, plunk, uh, put this arrow uh, straight through uh, the body of this jester fish. Now, normally I, I wouldn't do this, but I just, I'm just doing this for pure S and G's right now. I'm going to make a roll to see whether or not I actually remember to tie a line. <laughs> <laughs> To the arrow. <laughs> Thought that that would be a uh, part of the DC, but uh, yeah, go ahead, yeah. roll. So I'm rolling. I'm going to roll a D6. Odds okay. are uh, that I didn't, and evens I did. Even. <laughs> so I, ro I rolled a two. Okay. So I did tie it off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So evens you did remember. Is that right? Yes. Okay. All right. You are able to reel back in a jester fish, which is a small beast. And, oh, I'm going to roll. It's about 32 pounds. Let's see, seven, 10. Uh, it's not, it's a, tw it is a 20 pound fish. It wow. is worth 20 gold pieces. This is a moderately sized bright yellow fish with a big red bulb at the top of its mouth and fins that expel outward like human fingers. <laughs> Capable of clapping together in the water or making jazz-like motions. He's, what is a jazz-like motion? Is that jazz hands? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Nick just demonstrated for us. <laughs> <laughs> These fish are known to gravitate towards people with a sense of humor and create a honking noise with their bulbs when exposed to laughter. Jester fish is a popular pet for children on the coast and is commonly sold in markets or during festivals. This fish is kept in an environment devoid of of laughter or joy. It can die within 24 hours. So wow. how much was it worth? 20 gold pieces. He just so put basically a hole in a, it. A, I was yeah. going to say, he just stabbed it. <laughs> so yeah. basically a, a gold piece per pound. Yeah. Uh, by the way, um, it is stabbed. It is not dead yet. Uh, you can choose to uh, kill it right away. Or you could you could even heal it and put it in the hold because uh, the captain has a nice little uh, uh, freshwater pool in the hold of his in the hold of her ship. So if you wanted to keep it fresh, or if you wanted to keep it as a pet. <laughs> I kind of look down. It is edible. Oh, it is edible. Yes. Uh, hey, Captain, is is this fish any good? Sure. sure. Is it better, does it sell for more dead or alive, or does it not matter? You should have just ate it. Yeah, it's great. It sells for more alive. <laughs> yeah. So long. All right, well, I'll, so I'll, I'll carefully pull the arrow out. 
Yeah, you know, can you heal it? <laughs> One gold piece. <laughs> oh my god. I can heal it. Oh, would you, Abby? I think I only got one cure wounds. <laughs> so long as you get it to market uh, within 24 hours uh, so, of killing it so it doesn't spoil, um, you can get a uh, full price from it, dead or alive. Six. You can get more if you carve it yourself. I healed it for eight hit points. Woo! Ooh, that is the healthiest looking jester fish you've ever seen. And I have not <laughs> cast speak to animals because I don't want to hear the cries of pain. <laughs> <laughs> I shall name him George for the time being. George the jester fish. George Jester is his wife Judy. Judy Jester. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll 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 put them in the the fresh or the the freshwater pool. Is it freshwater meaning fresh fresh water or freshwater as in fresh salt water? Good question. Um, you're on a salty sea, so it's going to be salt water. All right. So I'll I'll make sure the that it, it's it's salt water first, and then I'll plop them in there. Um, you're on mute. Oh, that was your there. Oh my god, he wasn't even talking yet. <laughs> I was like, I know, I'm talking to myself. I think I was mumbling. <laughs> <laughs> so, is uh, Kai Lil going to be using your dexterity stat also? Uh, or do you want to use a different stat? Let's go <laughs> with wisdom. <laughs> Wisdom. Okay. Uh, this is called still fishing. Still fishing involves you casting a line into the fishing area, typically with some bait, and waiting for the fish to bite. A simple style that requires little to no training. Still fishing is what most anglers typically use. Because of this, the GM may determine that no additional training, whether it be fees or time, is required. Just grab a fishing tackle, go out to the fishing area, and just fish. Uh, so, um, because I could not find the rules for bow fishing in here, and I'm sure that they were in here, I read them, but I can't find them right now, um, you may do this with your bow instead of a rod and reel. Okay. Okay, roll me D100. Let's see what type of fish you're going to find. Uh, is that 82? Okay, and you may roll with advantage if you want to. Yeah, no, I'll just take the 82. 82. is a solar snapper that you're catching. Uh, make me an attack roll with your bow. The DC is going to be an 18. This is going to be a tough fish to catch. Mm, I got an 18 exactly. 18 exactly. In this system, unlike Cyberpunk... Uh, that's a success. Oh, sweet. Okay. Solar Snapper. That fish is worth 120 gold pieces. And, uh, we're not worrying about the experience here. Okay, it weighs about 20 pounds. This is a rectangular fish with golden scales that reflects sunlight like a mirror. 
The creature's natural mirror-like scales make it difficult to spot during the daytime sun, but the reflection is much more muted and easy to spot at night. The scales of the solar snapper are popular for use in, com in compact cosmetics as the mirrored scale not only provides a clear reflection, but also a soft glow that lights the face of the one gazing upon it. And this is uh, also a uh, edible fish. Might burn Did your tongue, though. <laughs> Did someone say they had like a fishbowl or something? Uh, yeah, the captain has a little uh, pool of salt water in the hold of the ship that you can keep your fish in if you want to. If you want to. I I gotta get out of the crow's nest. I'll just put it in my pocket, basically. I just put it on the, in the nest. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I thought you were naked. How do you have a pocket? Pocket in the crow's in the little nest I got. Oh, okay. Okay, this is a, a very valuable fish that you have caught, and uh, would you like to try and, uh, now uh, butchering the fish is uh, uh, what we do later in the process, so uh, we're not going to worry about that quite yet. Thank you. <laughs> uh, hey, Allison, are you fishing? Yeah. Of course you're fishing. Yes, uh, uh, did which... Nick roll higher than I did, though? <laughs> Uh, no, I think you rolled an eight and Nick is going on a six. Yep. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm fishing. All right, which stat are you going to use? Um, probably intelligence. All right. <clears throat> Ooh, tinker fishing. Tinker fishing isn't so much a style but an aid for catching fish using all of the latest gadgets and technology. While some anglers believe all you need is a rod, some bait, and the open waters, tinker fishing looks more towards the outcome than the journey. Because of that, you'll we'll often see tinkerers with satchels full of equipment to calculate the best chance of landing a big catch. The GM may determine that the tinker's fishing style is loud and clumbersome, and may easily pollute the area if care isn't taken. This could lead to local fines and angered anglers. So, uh, yeah, we're getting you a lot of chances to be uh, creative <laughs> this session. Um, how does the captain go uh, fishing? What sort of gadgetry or machines are you using here? Um, I'm going to say she has, like, uh, almost steampunky oh, net oh, shooter. <laughs> it, uh, you know, we'll sit there, point it out, lots of smoke, and it kind of booms a bit, and it sends out a net with a line on it that drops in, and then it'll, like, sort of automatically reel the line back. It's yeah. um attached to, like, the, I don't know, the bow or the stern of the ship. I don't know, some some place on the ship, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, it's gonna have lots and lots of really sort of unnecessary gears, and it's gonna make a lot of noise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this <is> cool. <laughs> it's also right, an opportunity uh, to yeah, just you know bring in as many fish as possible. Roll me a D100. Those are your two ten-siders together. Okay. Let's find out what type of fish uh, you're going to attempt to catch. I rolled a 10 and a 4. I get a 10 and a 4. Uh, is that 14? Yes, that is a 14. Uh, Winter. Whoops. A 14. 
uh, it that would be nothing. So it's a good thing that you're rolling with advantage. You can roll. Tw- you can roll twice. We'll see. <laughs> Am I surprised that the first, like, cast would bring in nothing? No. (laughs) 33. 33. Uh, This is strangely appropriate. Uh, You caught junk. (laughs) Not fish, but you pulled up junk, and... Now we get to roll on the junk table. Uh, specifically okay. the coast junk table. Oh, uh, roll me a- another D100. Okay. 97. Ooh. You caught a- Uh, this junk is not quite so junky. You caught something called a happy crab. And I don't remember what that is, so I gotta look it up. It's on our stream. It's dancing oh, right there. There he is. <laughs> okay, the happy crab is worth 250 gold pieces. Whoa. <laughs> it is a little red crab that fits in the palm of one's hand. It appears to dance to and fro with its claws and legs, can be kept as a companion after a successful wisdom animal handling check, DC 15. The companion uses the stat block of a crab, but has a plus three to performance checks. So are you going to sell it? Are you going to eat it? Or are you going to keep it? Um, I'm going to keep it. Why? It's a dancing crab. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> right. Uh, then you get to make a skill roll. This is a animal handling skill. Roll me your d20. Okay. And you're going to add your animal handling to this. But what's on the d20? It might be high enough by itself. Three? I rolled oh, a probably three? probably not. Am I able to assist? <laughs> oh. Yes. Uh, how are you assisting? Uh, I see that she's having a little bit of issues with this little dancing crab. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and cast Speak with Small Beast. And okay. my animal handling is plus two. And I'm going to run up and be like, do you need help, Captain? Okay. Because you are using the help action, and uh, now you are speaking the language of crab. This means that Allison gets to roll with advantage. So roll me that 20-sider again. Okay. Little crab, you would be honored to be with this super cool person right here. Just chill, dude. Chill. Well, I rolled a three. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> okay. I tried. <laughs> I tried. Uh, please look on your character sheet and tell me what your animal handling skill is. Plus one. Plus one for animal handling. <laughs> like, I got arcana and wisdom and all this other stuff that's high, but yeah, animal yeah. handling's like one. <laughs> okay, uh, what is your wisdom bonus? Wisdom is because... plus one. <laughs> okay, that's where, that's where you got your plus one from animal handling. Perception so, is and... plus seven. I don't know. Okay, at no point in your in your uh, sailing career did you ever uh, value um, animal handling as a skill. So, uh, so uh, uh, the crab um, uh, now uh, speaks to the gnome, and it says, "Hey, hey." I don't like the uh, scaly person. Uh, she pulled me out of the. She pulled me out of the water. Can you tell her to toss me back? I understand that that was very upsetting to you, but the thing is, you got to look at this as a new opportunity. What were you doing under the sea that was so cool that you couldn't do on this super amazing ship with this super amazing captain? She was dancing, and then she does the crab rave. I'll do it with her. <laughs> you can do it up here, see? 
like you, but I don't like the dragonborn. <laughs> I'll look at the captain and say, Captain, I tried, but he wants to go home. But it's totally up to you what you want to do because you're the coolest. And that was the coolest catch ever. And I loved it. Let's see. Um, she's debating whether she's going to keep the crab or whether the crab is going to go into the hold. <laughs> Bye. Crab's red, crab dances, like that, but now crab's being annoying, don't like that. <laughs> um, for right now, she'll can throw you, the crab in her pocket. Go ahead. Can you tell the dragonborn captain that her ship looks stupid too? Captain, the crab thinks that your ship is amazing, but still would really like to go home. I'm That's just, not what he said. I'm just trying. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she she looks up at the the bard and goes, "What do the crabs say?" <laughs> good, I think this good, crab good, and I can clack, get along clack, just fine. Clack, 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 clack. <laughs> <laughs> See, he doesn't know. I have an animal handling of plus four. Hold on. <laughs> I'll look at the crab and be like, if you don't stop running your little mouth, you're going to end up on a spit. What you get, Nick? I got a 12. <laughs> okay. That is... Oh. Nope, you needed a 15. 15, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, buddy, I tried. Can you grab a base? <laughs> yes. Alright, cool. The crab I can is understand what's saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, my favorite animals are uh, is beast. So I have the language of a beast. Help the Okay, you hear this uh, little crab uh, uh, who's uh, just uh, dancing to her own music, just uh, just af just uh, jamming. And uh, every once in a while, uh, complains about uh, how stupid the captain looks. I'm just gonna smile. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the captain. I love everybody in the world except the captain. I'm gonna dance with the crab, but only because the captain doesn't know what the crab's saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Can I do an action outside of my turn? Yes. All right, cool. Um, I'll simply fly I'll... down and talk to the crab. <laughs> okay, what are you saying to the crab? Uh, I'll tell the crab if they want to um, be with this captain, or would they rather be with someone like me? I would rather be with anybody but the captain. <laughs> the captain is dumb. The captain is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to gently pat the crab on the head. Cheeky little crab. <laughs> does he, do, 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 I'm the, very the lucky crab. that the, that she does not understand what the crab's saying. <laughs> Is the crab possibly a sister to Sebastian? <laughs> Teenagers. Um. Uh, I'll make well, a deal the with the crab. female, by the way. Uh, the mm -hmm. uh, ranger would be able to recognize that. And hey, Nick. Yeah. Which stat are you going to use for your fishing I am stuff? Going to use um, charisma. Charisma. Okay. Enchanted fishing. <clears throat> Enchanted fishing is more supernatural than other styles allowing you to lure fish in with your inherent magical abilities. Whether you are a bard using an illusionary lure with minor illusion, or a sorcerer attaching a glow to the end of your line with dancing lights, even as a magician, you can take a moment to enjoy fishing. A GM may determine that other spellcasters, such as druids or clerics, can use their wisdom instead of charisma to fish with his enchanted style or that a wizard may use intelligence. All right. 
and you're the character who uh, came uh, ready with your own rod and reel. So what does it look like when Howie fishes? Uh, <clears throat> so Does it we involve bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a it's hit, like normal people's rods are like really thin, but his is really thick. Uh, it, it doesn't really wave too much. Kind of just like you know goes out and it's really stiff. <laughs> it's just got like a like a string dangling from it. Um. We used that to we used to dirty, fish okay. with bamboo. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. It's just like he's just got a big old pole. Like he just puts it out there. Um, but um, he enchants the the hook so he doesn't need any any bait. Interesting. So roll me a d one hundred with advantage, please. D one hundred with advantage. That is a 99 or an odd odd. Holy shit. Jeez. Okay. I think that on this table that's yet, yeah, that odd odd is going to be a 100. Okay. So, uh, yeah, either way, it you are fishing for a fish called a heat snap. Uh oh. Oh, no, no. I just looked on the weather table. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, uh, 100, uh, the angler determines the result. So would you like to go for the uh, most valuable fish or the easiest to catch fish? Um, let's go for the uh, most valuable. A solar snapper or a jester fish? A uh, solar snapper. You want to go for the solar snapper. Okay. That is going to be a DC 18. Uh, you're going to roll uh, with advantage. You're going to roll your 20 cider and you're going to add your charisma stat bonus. 13. So I didn't get it. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You have proficiency with a rod and reel from your subclass. So add another two points. Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, solar snapper, you need an eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah. So did you roll the same thing twice? I did. I rolled two tens. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, you can make up to uh, three attempts to catch this solar snapper. So, oh. Uh, Roll it again. <laughs> I, uh, I rolled an eight, so I got an eleven. Okay. Uh, you're still rolling with advantage. Oh shit! All right. That's a crit. A crit so one twenty-three. So I got a twenty and a twenty-three. Ooh, okay, that is a your first success. Uh, you need two successes to catch this. I didn't notice that during the first <laughs> time we Solar Snapper. And you have uh, one more attempt to make. So um, roll with advantage the third time. I got a 16, so no. Wait, 16. 18. So I plus the two for proficiency, so yeah, I got an 18. Oh, by the skin of your teeth. <laughs> okay, you uh, so the solar snapper uh, starts uh, to pull away and it gets off the hook, but uh, then you uh, charisma it uh, magically uh, with your willpower and get it back onto the hook again and you reel it in. You caught the solar snapper. And what are you going to do with it? I'm just gonna throw it in the hold. I'm not gonna to talk to it. I don't want to talk to fish. Just throw it in there. <laughs> okay. Um, this is going to be worth uh, eighty gold pieces if you try to sell it. 
And uh, same description as earlier, a rectangular fish with golden scales that reflect sunlight like a mirror. Oh, uh, I will let you uh, roll for, uh, wait, roll me a four-sider. Let's see if yours is bigger or smaller than the other solar snapper. Three. Three, well, one. Exactly the same size, 20 pounds. Nice. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Hey, Shannon. What up? My daughter just crop dusted me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you available to do it to make a fishing roll? Yes. Uh, out of. Pure curiosity, I want to go with Constitution. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't sound good. Con, con, con. Oh, that's not a basic fishing style. Oh, well, <laughs> I do have wisdom as the same score if it's easier just to go wisdom. There is a, I remember there was a constitution version, but ah, I'm not finding it right now. Okay, so we're going to go with wisdom. Mm -hmm. Okay. But here's the thing. Could I possibly cast a water spout and see what fish I could throw up on deck. Is that allowed? Yes. Uh, what level spell is the water spout? Do, do, do. Um, it's here. Second. Okay. What does it look like when uh, uh, Abby uh, casts Water Spout. So she's going to stand right on the edge and kind of swirl her arms. And a five-foot swirling vortex of water forms far enough away from the ship where it's not going to cause an issue. She would never, ever, you know, hurt the captain sailing. And then... She kind of throws her arm up and a water spout like shoots from the middle of that vortex towards the ship, kind of arcing on the deck, hopefully with some fish in there. Um, it says objects in the water uh, is cast on that are no more than five pounds may be drawn up into the vortex when it's cast. Standing. There is damage in it, though. <laughs> Uh, yeah. 1d8 bludgeoning damage. Okay, <laughs> for anyone at home, this is a uh, new spell that comes with this game. It is a transmutation cantrip. Casting one action, range touch, and, uh... Oh. Oh, it's touch? Uh, you summon, um... Yeah, uh, you may command it to spray a jet of water at the target within 30 feet of itself. So, I'm not sure what touch actually means in this context. Well, I mean, I if I have to Scott? touch it, I would climb down the ladder hanging off the side, I assume, is there. Yeah. There is a fishing technique that I have uh, came across that uses that exact spell. What's the technique? It's called Vortex. All it's right. on uh, page... What is that? Page 14 of uh, the player play, play test packet 3. Uh, yeah, me curious. I'm going to look that up. Vortex, fishing technique. Can do it... Uh, Twice per long rest. After rolling, after rolling your fishing check, before determining the result of the roll, you can expend this fishing technique by a roll of dice determined by the rank of the technique 
and the result to your fishing check, well, that's complicated. Yeah, uh, <laughs> just tell me what to roll. <laughs> you're going to add a four-sider to your fishing check. All okay. right, uh, let's start with determining what fish that you're going to attempt to catch. Roll me your D100. Is that yes. with advantage? Yes, advantage because of the favorable weather. <laughs> 52. <laughs> 52. This is going to be a... Oh, a new fish. The sea centaur. Ooh. So. Let me grab the description of that real quick. Don't get any ideas, Howie. <laughs> this is going to be worth uh 10 gold pieces so um uh you're going to be making profit for today a minuscule orange sea animal that's no bigger than one's palm it has a wyvern like body with a horned horse nose uh that with a horned nose that swims with four curled tails, as if galloping through the water like a centaur. These little creatures naturally consume waste and toxic concoctions and expel healing matter that promotes a healthy coastline. Sea centaurs have no natural predators, but are fiercely protected by all aquatic life on the coast. If harmed or put into distress, Massive fish or sea beasts are known to come and defend them to the dying breath. <laughs> so are you actually going to go through with attempting to uh, pull this sea centaur off? I think when my spout starts raising and I see the sea centaur in it, I'm going to kind of like <gasps> gasp. And so that breaks the spell, and the water just falls back down, and the centaur goes back into the sea. Like, oh, then you can no, roll no, again. No, 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 <laughs> Yes, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up! No, Howie, no! <laughs> um, I mean, you do have advantage, so you can roll again. So, so now, what was, what's the other roll, other yeah. than the 52? Uh, I think it was like 24. It was a 20-something. Okay, that's going to be nothing. <laughs> I'm so good at this. <laughs> but because you are... <laughs> because you are using a water spout, which is going to uh, pull up uh, uh, the sea centaur, I'm going to roll, and because I want to use the table again... That uh, something else got caught in the same vortex. So roll me your D100 one more time. Not an Only advantage. Th one time, okay. Yeah. That's 79. 79. A spike fish. Worth uh, 50 gold pieces. There we are. An oval-shaped fish with a slimy green exterior that is dotted with sharp metal spikes, which are similar to daggers. When calm, the fish swims... Uh, this may be our last uh, fish of the night, so I'm going to do this dramatically. When calm, <laughs> the fish swims as normal with its spikes retracted into its body. However, if angered or disturbed, the fish balloons outwards, and its spikes shoot in a wide berth, attempting to maim everything within its vicinity. Is it stressed, since I just threw it out of the ocean? <laughs> yes, it is. This is... This is not a combat encounter, however. So, uh, the cat, the, 
the DC to catch this fish is going to be a 17. What's so, my modifier? For you, yeah. probably a plus 16. Uh, it's <laughs> going to be your wisdom modifier. I'm about to get stabbed in the face, guys. Okay, roll your 20 cider, add your wisdom modifier. Nine total. And then roll a, another four cider because you're using the vortex. Ten total. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, uh, the spike fish is a uh, one attempt fish. <laughs> You only need one success, but you only get one shot at it. And you did not make uh, the necessary DC. So the spike fish escapes. That's fine, as long as I don't get stabbed. And I'll, I'm going to look at the captain and go, This is so much fun! Okay, so uh, you pull a spike... Uh, so, um... Uh... So first you pull out the first fish, which was called a sea centaur, and uh, you realize you didn't want it because you don't want to tick off any uh, uh, more dangerous fish or sea monsters. So you cancel the vortex, and then as this water spout is dispersing, it spits out a spike fish, which sails over the boat right at your face, and the daggers uh, stick out from the sides. And then Abby, and then Abby dodges like whoa, Matrix style. <laughs> the fish goes over her, sails over the deck, and right over the other side, back into the water again. <laughs> She'll just stand up and be like, "Whoa!" <laughs> okay, and. Oh, I'm thinking that we're only going to uh, make uh, one of these rolls each because um, my time, as always, is um, is limited. I'm always the killjoy here. No, you're fine. <laughs> Vol, you left time. Okay. So that took an hour, uh, which uh, is all that uh, the uh, captain was uh, contracted uh, to take these anglers out onto the water today for. Mm -hmm. But um, but uh, the spell that you cast is going to be good for another seven hours. Though it's your decision whether you want to uh, go back into dock or not. Um, I'm going to say... Uh... Y'all pay me uh, money. We can stay out here longer. Otherwise, we're going back in. I'm having a blast. How much money? <laughs> oh, that? No. <laughs> no. You can swim or ride give the hawk back. Give her your magic money. <laughs> well, <laughs> you Jesus. only get my magic money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> whip out the bagpipes and start playing them for you. <laughs> I dare you to jump in there and catch one of those sea centaurs and see what happens. Hold on, I got a better idea. How about you do it? And I <laughs> I cast I cast a a bardic inspiration on her and it changes her into a giant toad. What? Can I counteract that? I'm not willing. No. Yeah, yeah, you have to be willing, but I think it'd be funny. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. I tried. I'll just I'll just stand there with my arms crossed looking up at you blinking. What? I don't what? 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 <laughs> the whole way what? back to the dock. What? 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 Uh, what? <laughs> when you get back to the dock, uh, there is a little uh, fishmonger stand. 
that has been set up. It it's about the size of a lemonade stand, mm. and there is a little uh, furry guy of a race called the Racklings, and um, they are the raccoon-looking guys who are on the cover of the game. <laughs> uh, he's sitting there uh, in a fishing cap, and uh, his little sign uh, uh, reads something uh, in. Uh, oh, will it be in common? Let me roll a die real quick. Um, no. Uh, it is, uh, written in Draconic. Does anybody here speak <laughs> Draconic? I do. I bet you the... Okay, the captain alone will be able to read the sign, and it's, uh, fishmonger, uh, buying fish at market value. Nice. Um, I'm ready to turn in the crab, which has at this point in time bit me, and... <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't bitten you. He just uses his little claws, snappers, and Pinched snapped me. at you a few times. Pinched me, uh, and... Uh... Uh, the, cr the crab has done both. <laughs> <laughs> because it really dislikes the captain. So, yeah, it's right now uh, holding on to your finger, and it's also biting your thumb. Sorry. I hold it out like that to the fishmonger, going, uh, yeah. Uh, market value for this thing. <laughs> Which is, I believe, 250-something. Oh, good. I was just about to look that up. 250 gold pieces, I think. Oh, okay. And then the... Uh, then the... Uh, little rackling says... Oh, yeah, that's a happy crab. There's always a demand for those. Uh, the, those happy? Uh, children and the teachers <laughs> like them. I, I, can even, I can even sell that to the nobles. Uh, absolutely. Um, I'll pay you two, I'll pay you 250 gold pieces for that. Sound like Sounds a deal? great. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he puts out his tiny little, uh, uh, rackling a uh, hand and uh, the crab and the happy crab happily jumps onto it and uh says um in its crab language that only the beast speakers can understand oh oh thank you for rescuing me from the captain she was the worst <laughs> bye crabby <laughs> at and least I you just, didn't uh... become a crabby patty <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah i pocket my catch and i swoop up you know i grab a rope and dramatically climb you know back onto the ship okay uh allison give me a perception roll please so you're going to roll a 20 cider and you're going to add your uh passive perception bonus perception Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, that beats the DC. Um, yeah, this is not, these are not real gold coins. They're fake. I immediately can sniff that, jump down, <laughs> grab, the, <laughs> grab the crab, and grab the raccoon by his neck. <laughs> um, fake gold? You think you're going to do fake gold? <laughs> The raccoon says. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not a good answer, is it? I like turn him upside down and start shaking to get as much coins out of him, as many coins out of him as I can. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you another roll on the junk table for that. Okay. Um, can I add anything to that? Uh, D1... No, just a straight D100. Oh, D100. I'm sorry. Okay, just a second. <laughs> 94. 94. Uh, yeah, you get a black leather book. Which falls Great. out of his pocket. And that's going to be worth, let me see, let me see. Uh, that's worth 10 gold pieces by itself. 
A leather book with many soggy pages that are illegible, but appears to be long ramblings of a personal note. The last page, the only readable, the only legible one reads, I was wrong. <laughs> and I take and the leather book and I bop it. him on the head a few times. <laughs> you know, uh, he didn't have any real gold with him. You're going to have to go into the town to find an actual fishmonger. <laughs> Great. I also have grabbed the crab back, right? And the crab, I'm sure, did like like a little crab. Let me just like, no. Nah. Yeah, uh, the crab is going to make an evasion roll, and I rolled a one. <laughs> <laughs> you catch you, you catch the happy crab. So, happy is crab any, ain't no happy. Is anybody else? Uh, Interested in selling uh, his or her fish to this rackling? Uh, no. <laughs> Does he have fish? Oh, uh, uh, roll me a six cider. On a six, the answer is yes. Yeah, I don't too. <laughs> nope, no fish. Um, it's still uh, mid morning, so you guys probably it was probably only an hour there or back. You spent an hour fishing, so it's uh he hasn't uh, swindled any other fishermen yet today. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, so I'm guessing we're gonna have to head into town to sell this stuff. Yes, you will. So, if you guys want to do that, because it's uh, about quitting time for me, um, uh, you may either uh, keep your catches, or you may trade them in for the gold value that I already gave to you. Um, and if you didn't write that down, I can get that for you again, real quick. Oh, so let's go down the list. Hey, Jason, are you keeping your catch, or are you selling it? I'm selling. Selling, okay. You get a uh, full market value. We're not even 20 going gold to pieces. Yeah, we're not even going to bother with carving the fish or trying, <laughs> or trying to make any magic items out of them. Hey, Luke, are you keeping your catch or are you selling it? I'm going to keep it because I want to trade it for something else later. Okay. <laughs> uh, Allison, uh, you are keeping the happy crab. For now, right. I want... <laughs> He's pinching me still, and I'm like, rotten little bastard. <laughs> Happy. I, I kind of want crab. Uh, Nick, I want the crab. <laughs> are you keeping your catch, or are you getting gonna, rid of it? I'm going to keep it, because I don't trust this captain to find us more food. <laughs> okay, and uh, Shannon, uh, you didn't catch anything, did you? I'm keeping the amazing memories. <laughs> Always on the bright side. <laughs> All right. Oh, so this has been, um, most of these uh, fish and uh, items on the junk table, by the way, were created uh, by the uh, community members who have been participating in the uh, fishing discord. So uh, thanks to all of them. Uh, thanks to Brett Ultimus for putting together the for putting together this game. I believe that his game is still on Kickstarter. And do, 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 do. Uh, do we have any player feedback that we want to give Brett? Other than uh, get a game master who knows what he's doing better. It doesn't have no, to be you did great. I had a blast. You did great. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. Um, have to, like, I think, play a little bit more just to get a feel for it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. it, it's it's definitely good for uh, side quests. I don't I don't know about full on adventure unless if um, it was more of a uh, a seafaring <laughs> yeah uh, type of 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 adventure. Um, but yeah, I, other than that, I I would definitely say that it, uh, expanding and having a because I did see that there was a harpooning type uh, technique, but. Having yeah. that bow fishing, so something that's a little bit more archery based, whether it's with a crossbow uh, or or a bow or something like that. So, 
It's got to be in here somewhere. I know that I've seen it. I'm just not finding it. Oh, if you're going uh, seafaring too, I mean, I happen to have a weather spell because it was a wizard and all that, but uh, you do some other stuff, you might be able to challenge some storms so there could be some, you know, natural disasters you're trying to avoid, like tsunamis or something, you know? Rogue waves, rogue holes. <laughs> yeah. There is a monsoon that is on the winter chart. Um, it gives both uh, disadvantage on fishing tables and disadvantage on fishing checks, but it's not directly dangerous to you. So, uh, yeah, on other charts, there are thunderstorms, uh, broiling heat. There is a hurricane. <laughs> so, narratively, yeah. that would be very dangerous. So, um, yeah. You could uh, get some choppy seas in there. You could get to, you know, again, uh, rogue waves. You could throw in some things that'll just come out of a little bit out of nowhere to kind of... Um, I think the, the fishing is great for a side quest. Um, you just might want to... It depends on if you want to keep it strictly as fishing or if you want to include any of the sailing in there, but I really like the fishing part of it. It's cool. Okay. Uh, rogue waves is not anywhere in the document. Uh, nobody has added that to the game yet. Okay. Interesting. Ah, oh, that's all I've got for tonight. I'm going to go be a, be a role play as a blue collar working stiff for a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you guys. We are going Thanks, to everybody. we're gonna raid We Are Nerdsmith. They're currently playing Call of Cthulhu, so I thought we'd send you two more tabletop games. So thanks everybody. See ya. Bye. 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 Bye.